What's up guys, Void here, coming back at y'all with another deck tech video for another one of my patrons, Frogger Pirate, and he requested that I make a good commander deck out of a bad commander, and he chose Mistra Artificer Prodigy, who actually isn't that bad of a commander, but I understand what he means. At face value, Mistra looks awful for this format, being the fact that it's a singleton format and you're not going to have multiple copies of artifacts in your deck for obvious reasons. However, there are ways to manipulate his trigger and put it onto the stack, let other things resolve, and I'm going to basically be explaining all the interactions as I go through the deck tech. Let's just read off what he does here real quick. He is in 4 mana, Grixis Colors, he's a 4-4 human artificer. Whenever you play an artifact spell, you may search your graveyard hand and or library for a card with the same name, as that spell and put it into play. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. This is very important. The fact that he searches your graveyard hand and or library for a card with the same name means that you get to manipulate the trigger here. And the obvious card that I'm going to be mentioning is Possibility Storm. I'm going to explain real quick how this works and it's not the easiest thing to explain because Possibility Storm is just a ton of text on a card. Essentially, you cast an artifact spell. Mistra's ability goes on the stack. You have Possibility Storm resolve first. You get the artifact off of the top of your deck with the Possibility Storm. Possibility Storm resolves whatever card you initially casted, which was an artifact, goes onto the bottom of your library with the rest of the cards that were exiled with Possibility Storm. Now, Mistra's ability then resolves. You originally casted an artifact spell and Mistra then searches your library for that same artifact spell which is now in your library off of Possibility Storm. So it allows you to put that one into play in addition to whatever you get off of Possibility Storm. So it's the main reason why this 5 mana enchantment is perfect for this deck because what it does is it disrupts what your opponents are trying to do, makes it to where they have to get cards out of their deck instead of what they're originally casting, and it also benefits you because you're going to get what you want as long as you have Mishra on the field too, in addition to whatever else you get off of Possibility Storm. So there are a ton of variants with this guy, and I'm just going to tell you right now, there are just a lot of expensive cards that you can throw into this deck to make it good, the obvious inclusion being Nether Void, a $500 card from Legends, so I doubt the majority of you want to spend $500 on a card just to optimize a janky deck, which is really what it is. It's a janky deck. It either works or it doesn't, but when it works, it's very interesting and very fun. There are Storm variants of this deck. Obviously, with Possibility Storm, you get extra cast triggers, so it's nothing but positives there. But again, it, it can be very expensive, so this entire deck is actually pretty budget for Commander. We're talking under $300, around $270, according to tapped out which i'm kind of proud of it's a decent deck it's not fantastic essentially what we have here is an artifact deck that uses a possibility storm to take advantage of mishra's ability so just treat this as a grixis artifact deck and not just a storm variant so there are some combos in here which i'm going to basically just go through with each individual card and tell you what the combos are so you guys get the gist of what the deck is supposed to do with the combos. Let's take a look at the lands here real quick. We play a whole bunch of mana fixing. We didn't want to go too specific so we're not playing shock lands or any of the fetch lands. It would obviously make this deck a lot better but it definitely helps to keep the cost of the deck down if we can just eliminate a lot of these expensive lands. So we have some decent mana fixing enough already but we want to focus on utility so we have buried ruin which is a good substitute for Academy Ruins. It's not going to have a long-term impact because it sacrifices itself, but it's still good at what it does. And then we have Inventor's Fair, which is just incredible. One of the best lands printed in the last couple years. Four mana, you sacrifice it, and you get to search your library for an artifact. And you do this as long as you have three or more artifacts, so it's kind of a Metalcraft ability. Pretty cool card. And then we have Awesome Artifacts. We have a ton of mana ramp. We're just going to get the mana ramp artifacts out of the way here first. We have Soul Ring. Talisman of Indulgements, Talisman of Dominance, Racto Signet, Demir Signet, Is It Signet, all basic, but again, in an artifact deck, you want as much mana fixing in the form of artifacts as you can get, because there is another card that does synergize pretty well with it, which we're going to get here in a second. Felwar Stone, Basalt Monolith, more mana fixing and just mana ramp in general, as well as Commander Sphere. It has the option of sacrificing itself, giving you a card draw. Darksteel Ingot gives you that also mana fixing, as well as being the fact that it's indestructible. It's pretty solid. And then we have Gilded Lotus, which is 
arguably one of the best mana rocks in the whole format. It taps for three colored mana, which is arguably better than just tapping for colorless mana, but we can move on to the obvious card, and that is Paradox Engine. The reason why Gilded Lotus is so good, constantly retapping, untapping your mana artifacts gives you practically infinite mana for this deck. And the only downside is that this isn't a Storm variant, and a card like Paradox Engine obviously works better in a Storm variant based deck, but it still is pretty good in just giving you a ton of mana. Then we have more of our utility, more of our non mana based artifacts. So we have Ecor Wellspring, it gets us a card draw when it ETBs and when it leaves the battlefield. Pretty good. Time Sieve is is going to combo with Thopter Assembly, which we're going to mention later, but there is a way to get infinite turns off of this, and I'll follow that up when we get to Thopter Assembly later on. Mirage Mirror is amazing in this deck. You get to, just for two mana, copy another artifact. There are a lot of ways that you can just take advantage of this, and it happens to be with the following card, which is Aetherflux Reservoir. If you can just copy this card, which there are a ton of ways you can copy artifacts in this deck, you can just cast maybe three or four spells a turn, and then suddenly you're just able to start knocking players out of the game. It's quite ridiculous. Brilliant card, and it's definitely a win con. It's even more of a win con in Storm Variants. We have a ton of tutors and we have a ton of artifact tutors, so it shouldn't be hard to find this card. It is quite brilliant and just kind of furthers the jank in this deck. It's a janky card, but it's still a pretty funny win con. Then we have Mirror Works, which is another way we can copy our artifacts that enter the battlefield. So we have to have this on the battlefield first, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. As soon as we play our Aether Flux Reservoir or similar artifacts that are good, we just pay two extra and we get a copy of it, a token copy, onto the battlefield. It doesn't go away at the end of the turn or anything like that, so... Definitely a great card to have in any deck that uses a lot of good ETBs. We have Mycosynth Lattice. Combos with Vandal Blast because we want to be able to just win the game there right on the spot. And usually when you're able to destroy everyone's permanents because they're all considered artifacts, you're stay alive because that's how Vandal Blast works. Pretty good card and I'll obviously continue that when we get to Vandal Blast later on. And have Spine of Ishsaw and Darksteel Forge. And Spine is just very good. It's destroyed. It goes back to your hand. Constantly reusable. It's colorless removal. Very difficult to deal with. Just artifact synergies are pretty good. Darksteel Forge, making your artifacts indestructible. Definitely helps you grind out if you don't have necessarily what you need to win. It's a pretty solid card in artifacts, usually a staple. Now we move on to our creatures. We play the awesome one drop in Goblin Welder. Basically, we trade an artifact on the field for an artifact in the graveyard. It's not just our artifacts, it could be our opponent's artifacts as well. So, there's some awesome versatility there, and usually when one drops can do that much for just one mana, they're typically going to see a lot more play. You have Chief Engineer. All of our artifacts scanning Convoke is just ridiculous with Paradox Engine. Makes it to where we don't even need a ton of mana rocks. We have pretty much what we need right there to win. Try to get more cast triggers for Aether Flux Reservoir if we get to that. Baleful Strix, ETBs, gets you a card draw. Flying Death Touch, 1-1. One, one. Pretty simple. If we can recur it or flicker it or get copies of it, we get more card draw. Pretty good card. Scrap Trawler, good way, a little cheap way to recur artifacts from our graveyard if they have less CMC than a card that is put to the graveyard. It's not fantastic, but it's definitely something that has combo potential in the future. And we have Shimmer Mirror, giving our artifact spells flashes. Just absolutely ridiculous. Thada Adele is even more ridiculous because you deal combat damage. She has Island Walk, so she's going to be able to deal combat damage for the most part. A lot of people play Islands in this format, so it should be too hard to deal combat damage, but once you're able to, you can search up something basic like a Soul Ring that's in just about every single commander deck you can think of. You play it, Mishra gets you yours from your deck, so that's kind of how you get around a singleton format. You just steal your opponent's stuff. And that's another way of making use of Mishra's trigger. Most of the time he's going to be dead, but if you can steal your opponent's artifacts and get yours from your deck, that's even better. Then we have all three of the mages. Trinket Mage gets uh, CMC 1 or less. Trophy gets CMC 3, exactly. Treasure Mage gets CMC 6 or more from your deck. And all those artifacts, I mean, getting tutors is pretty good. On creatures, it's even better. I just like all of them. They're all CMC 3, so they're pretty cheap. They're creatures, they give you blockers, they're pretty good cards. Master Transmuter, pretty good with Paradox Engine if you can return artifacts to your hand, recast them, get more mana, just keep recasting them until eventually you get to an Aetherflux Reservoir and win the game. Pretty good synergies there, untapping and tapping with Paradox Engine. Padim, Console of Innovation, gives Hexproof to our artifacts, as well as giving us card draw during our upkeep if we have the artifact with the highest CMC. Then we have Phyrexian Metamorph, good copy, good clone. Artifact or creature, pretty versatile. Solemn Simulacrum gets us a land from our deck, and when it dies, we get to draw a card. Pretty good, pretty basic card. Even better in artifact-based decks. 
Koldotha, Forge Master, sacrificing three artifacts to get whatever we need from our deck. Maybe it's a Paradox Engine, maybe it's an Aetherflux Reservoir. Either way, it's going to be good. Giving up three artifacts, we have a ton of artifacts that are disposable. As long as we get to what we need to win, that's more important. Sphinx Summoner gets us an artifact creature from our deck. And there are some more artifact creatures that we haven't even mentioned yet that are worth grabbing, and they're pretty cool. Soul of Newphorexia has the activated ability of both on the field and in the graveyard. It can make your permanents indestructible. Pretty good. Thopter Assembly, obviously I mentioned earlier the combo with Time Sieve. If you're able to sacrifice all five of the little Thopters you get off of the Thopter Assembly, you get an extra turn. The Thopter Assembly returns back to your hand. You get to replay it and just keep doing this until you have enough mana to eventually just win the game. Do your other things as well. So it gives you infinite turns. Pretty basic. Steel Halkite. Awesome removal. Can definitely deal with multiple different permanents if you deal combat damage with it. So it is a little bit dependent on that, but still a good artifact creature. Marionette Master. Capable of, if you have some way of just sacrificing multiple different artifacts, you can start knocking players out of the game, dealing a ton of damage with it. Or if you just want to get some more little servo tokens that's also a thing you could do overall pretty good card noxious gear hulk etbs you get to destroy a creature and you gain life i mean that's pretty solid on an etb you get to take advantage of that clone it pretty good card so we also have that in combustible gear hulk but combustible can either deal a ton of damage to our opponent or get us cards off the top of our deck so pretty good option there as well and Ethereum Horn Sorcerer is just hilarious in this deck with Paradox Engine. If you're able to just constantly bring this back to your hand, you get the Cascade trigger over and over again. That is just funny. It works well because it's also considered an artifact. Then we have Memnarch. If we have infinite mana or close to it, this practically wins us the game. Also synergizes well with Mycosynth Lattice, which I also mentioned earlier. Pretty good card all around. Can also just turn things into artifacts and synergize that way. Mere Battle Sphere gets us tokens. If we can get more mirrors off the ETB, clone it, or do something like that, we can win that way as well. Just deal a ton of damage off of a mirror battle sphere is always fun. Blightsteel Colossus, for obvious reasons, it's not the optimal win con, but if we just want to deal a ton of damage with the Infect and likely win the game off of someone who just doesn't have sufficient enough blockers, this is going to run over just about anything. Then we move on to enchantments. Other than Possibility Storm, we do play Blood Funnel, it doesn't really punish our opponents like Possibility Storm, but it does make our non-creature spells two mana cheaper to cast. Obviously, this is a card that would see usefulness in a Storm variant. Making your spells cheaper is kind of what you want to do for that. Another positive, though, is the fact that with Mishra, you can just let the spell get countered as long as it's an artifact, of course. It goes to the graveyard. Mishra Synergy works out well with that because then the Blood Funnel would go on the stack first, and that would resolve. It would go to the graveyard, and then Mishra would search for your graveyard for the same exact artifact, and it would put it back onto the battlefield as if it wasn't countered in the first place. So pretty good synergy there, and making your spells cheaper is also pretty nice. Phyrexian Arena and Rhystic Study are obvious card draw enchantments. They're pretty good in a deck where you might be lacking in speed and card draw. These are going to help you out a little bit. Then we move on to Planeswalkers. We play three pretty decent ones. We play Sahili Rai. Kind of goes with the synergy of copying, getting more copies of our artifacts with her minus. Her plus is pretty decent. We get the scry. Her alt is pretty awesome. In a singleton format, getting three different artifacts with different names is likely going to help you win the game, especially in this deck. And we also have Doretti Scrap Savant because, hey, we like the whole graveyard synergy that red cards have with artifacts and his minus is pretty good with that. The plus is kind of like a Faithless Looting type effect, so that's also pretty good. His ult is pretty hilarious as well. Whenever an artifact you control enters the graveyard, it returns to the battlefield under your control. So there's a lot of potential there. Another good Planeswalker for the deck. Then you have Tezzeret the Seeker. Basically a tutor on a minus for 5 mana Planeswalker. If you just kill him right off the bat, you basically get to search up your Aetherflux Reservoir. So you have the win con on the ready right there. The plus is also pretty good on tapping artifacts. It's just going to give you more mana, make him more efficient to bring out there. And the alt is kind of bad, but you don't really put him in there for the alt. You put him in there for the plus and the minus, which still makes him one of the better Planeswalkers in the entire format too. Then we move on to our instance. We play three instants. We have Vampiric Tutor, which is going to help us get to our combo pieces, our Paradox Engine, our Possibility Storm, preferably if we can get to that. That's the main reason why we have some Artifact Tutors in here. So we want to save our Vampiric Tutor for our Possibility Storm, something we can't just tutor up like Artifacts. Cyclonic Rift, really Grixis just suffers when it comes to removal for the most part. So having this, just dealing with our opponent's non-land permanents all at once, it's pretty good. And then War of Invention, yet another Artifact Tutor. 
has improvised so we can tap down our other artifacts to help search for whatever we need be it a paradox engine or a aetherflex reservoir it's going to be pretty good then we have some sorceries because hey you can't have a good deck without some good sorceries vandal blast is ridiculously good with mycosynth lattice you can basically just wipe out your entire opponent's board states their lands included pretty funny demonic tutor yet again same thing as vampiric tutor we want to be able to search up our possibility storm get our combo going prevent our opponents from really doing much else fabricate another artifact tutor for three mana praetor's grasp kind of like thought adele where if we want to search up something from our opponent's deck get a very popular very commonly played artifact such as a soul ring we can then play that with Mistress Trigger. We get to search for our very own Soul Ring from our deck if we don't already have it. So you get a ton of advantage there. If you know your opponents are playing a combo deck, it's even better. Then we have Diabolic Tutor. If searching up for our Possibility Storm wasn't really so important for this deck, we probably wouldn't be playing a Diabolic Tutor. It is 4 mana compared to 2 mana for the same exact ability in Demonic Tutor, but it is worth it when you get to the pieces that you need. And then the last card we play is... Sahili's Artistry, we get to make a token artifact copy of a creature and one of an artifact as well. So we get the versatility there. It kind of goes with the theme of making copies, getting more out of our Aetherflux Reservoir, out of our Paradox Engine Triggers. Very good card for what we want to do here. So anyway guys, that was my deck tech for Mistra Artificer Prodigy for Frogger Pirate. Thank you again for being an awesome patron. And if you want to become a patron, just check it out. Link will be in the description below. You could definitely use some more support. It will help out the channel. And I actually love this commander. I really do. I think he's not as bad as advertised. Obviously, he is quite useless unless you have the right board state. But once you do, he's incredible. And there are some stacks variants as well with Mishra. And of course, you have the storm variants as well. But again, if you want to optimize the deck, it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars to do that. This deck I put together, it's not perfect, but it's under $300. I don't want to put together a deck list that's like $10,000 for casual EDH commander. I just don't feel like that's the right thing to do unless someone asks me to do it. Unless someone actually says, you know what, Void, make me a super expensive commander deck. I want to put it together. I have the money, I'm rich, or I already have the cards. I've been playing this format. I've been playing this game for a long time. I know what I'm doing, then yeah, I might make a deck tech for them using the most expensive cards possible from sets like Antiquities, Legends, Arabian Nights, I mean super expensive cards that you can play in this format. But this is mainly just for fun, I mean this is a janky deck, so even when optimized I still don't think it's the best deck in the format, better than a lot of the other decks that are optimized at the very least, but I think it's fun enough as is. I think you can definitely use a Grixis artifact shell for what you want to do with the deck and just take advantage of Mistress Trigger once you have cards like Blood Funnel, once you have cards like Possibility Storm out there. So what I recommend playing him if you just want to make the optimal deck if you're also playing on a budget, probably not. There's a lot more money to go into him. But I think as is, if you want to play a fun deck that's... It is janky, but the combos are pretty good. I mean, you have some pretty solid ones that you can depend on. Like the Time Seed, Infinite Turns combo, as well as the Mycosynth Lattice Vandal Blast combo. That's kind of a sure thing there. You're pretty much going to win the game there. But anyway, I mean, thanks again to Frogger Pirate. Hope you guys enjoyed this deck tech. I definitely want to continue doing these for my patrons. They're pretty fun. They take a lot of effort, a lot of thinking. And this one was very cool. I actually like doing it. It took a lot of effort on my part just to kind of think of how to work the deck together. And hopefully I did that pretty well. So anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. Void here signing off.